Hi, welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be doing the rise and fall method. So I'm going to try and show you step by step how to do the calculation as well as try and give you a little bit of an illustration of how it works. Alright, so we'll start. Um, first thing is first is actually make sure that you guys know that rise equals positive and fall equals negative uh, in this. And then backside is the first reading of a setup and front side is your last reading of your setup. Alright, so this is the table we're going to be using. Um, these are the headings, we have the names, so we can name our points. We have our back sides, our intermediate sides, and our front sides. These are what we take from the site, these are our readings. Then we are going to do rise and fall. We're going to use those values to determine our reduced levels, our corrections, and our final heights. So, the first thing we're going to do is we will put in the points that we're going to record. So, we have our benchmark beginning and we're going to put it at the end as well and we're also going to write in the names of all the points that we are going to survey. So we start, we have our benchmark, we have the points we are required to record. So this is our site. Now the first thing we'll do is we'll set up our theodolite or our dumpy level um, in position where we feel we can see quite a number of points as well as the benchmark. Then, according to the table, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to record our benchmark. So we're going to take our benchmark, and that'll be our first back site because it's our first reading of our setup. Then we're going to read all our intermediate sites. So we have an intermediate site here. We take the other one, and then we take our last reading for the setup, which will be our front site or our fore site. So this is our first survey or first setup for the survey. So when we go to our table, we'll put in our recordings. So the first reading was our benchmark. Then we had our two intermediate sites, and then we had our front sites. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do our second setup. So we're going to move from our first setup to our second setup. Now, once again, we're going to take a back site, but our back site has to be our previous foresight. So you see, this was our foresight for our first setup, now it's going to be our back site for our second setup. So this is now our first reading of the setup, which was the previous one. Then we can take another intermediate site, and then our last reading will be our fourth site again. So uh, now we've got three readings, back site, intermediate site, and fourth site. So if we look at our table, the green values, the back site, this is the same value as our previous fourth site, so we put it in the same row, at the same point. So then we have the intermediate site, and then our last reading, which was a front site. Alright, so then we'll move our setup to a new position, because we need to read our benchmark at the end to determine our correction. So we start, our back site will once again be our previous fourth site, which is our first reading. Then we'll read our last reading, which is our fourth site for the setup, um, and that will be our benchmark again. We put this into the table, so number five, we read it last on our second setup. Now we're doing it, reading it first on our first setup, on our third setup, sorry. All right, so now we have a front side and a back side. Notice how we do not have any intermediate sides because we did not read any points between our first and our last reading. All right, so the first thing we do is we had a final height given to us that we know the benchmark was because the benchmark has a fixed height. Then we're going to go take this and take it to our reduced level. So this is our reduced level, we're going to assume it's the same. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine our rise and fall values. So how we do this is we usually say a back site minus intermediate site gives us our rise or fall. This is a negative, so it's a fall. The next one we're going to say intermediate site minus intermediate site. So it is um, this value minus this value gives us a positive value, so that is a rise. Once again, intermediate site minus foresight, and this time we um, get a positive value, which is a four, a rise. Sorry. All right. So as you can see, it's either back site minus intermediate site, intermediate site minus intermediate site, intermediate site minus foresight. That's how we always do it. So you see on the next setup. We have once again back site minus intermediate site gives us a rise. Then we have intermediate site minus the front site 
which gives us a 4 because it's negative. And then the last situation is where we do not have intermediate sides. So this is where we have the back side minus the front side, and that gives us a 4, quite a big 4 as well. So from here, what we're going to do is we are now going to determine our next reduced levels. So we're going to say this 49.873, we're going to add our rise, or 4, in this case it's a 4, so it's a negative, and we're going to get our next reduced level for 0.1. Then we're going to take that, we're going to add our, four, our rise, gives us a reduced level, take this plus this gives us our next value, this plus this gives the next, and so on, until we get to our last reduced level. We've calculated our reduced levels, we calculated our rise and fall. So now what we have to do is we have to determine if we have done our calculations correctly up until this point. So we first have our backsides where we add up all our backsides and get a total of 6.962. And we have our front sides as well where we add up all our front sides and get a value of 8.131. Now the check we can do is we can say our first check is our backsides total minus our front sides total and will give us a value. So that's the first value we can compare to another value. So the second part of the check, uh, we will take our last reduced height minus our first reduced height and then we'll get a value. If this value and this value are the same, then we have the reverse correct check. Alright, so now these are our reduced levels. Uh, these are estimates and not our final values uh, because we need to correct them in case there was human error or there's an issue with equipment or something like that. So how do we correct this? We're going to say our final height minus our reduced level and we're going to get our correction. In this case it's 1.169. Notice how this value and this value are the same. Okay, In this case they're opposite are polars but you can see it's the same quantity. Alright, so we're going to use this value and we're going to say our final corrections, which is this value, divided by the number of stations um, will give us a correction per setup. So the way we determined our number of stations is we count our back sides, one, two, three, or even our four sides, one, two, three, because every setup has a four side and a back side. So that means we have three setups, which means that we can divide our total correction, divide by three, and we get 0.390. Right, so we have to assume that this correction gradually happened over the entire survey. So at station one, the same amount of error was made by as um, station two and station three. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that value times one because it's our first setup. We're going to get plus 0 0.39 for our first station. Then we're going to do it again. So this time I'm going to say times 2 because it's this correction plus or this error plus this error. So that's why we have 0, 0,779. And then once again we say times 3 because it's our third station to get our third correction for third setup. Now we're going to take these values and we'll say every time our reduced level plus our correction gives us our final height. And we're going to repeat this step for every reduced level that we calculated or reduced height and then we'll get our final heights. Alright, so this is now our table, this is how we took our readings from our survey and calculated our final heights. Alright, thank you very much, I uh, hope this video helped you. We're going to make a height of instrument method uh, video as well which works together with this video because they do similar calculations or they determine similar values um, use the same form of correction, but they have a different uh, method. Alright, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe to this uh, video and ask any questions below. We're here to help you.